Okay, in uh, After Effects 2022, we're going to look at w working with Particle World and playing around with it a little bit and see what it can do for us. So we're going to start with a new composition, and I'm just going to call this Particle. It's always good to name your compositions, and I'm going to make it 1920, 1080 square pixels, 24 frames per second, 20 seconds long. We're just going to play around here a little bit, have some fun with it. So what I'm going to look at first is making a couple layers, some solid layers. So I'm going to make a background layer first, a black background layer, 1920, 1080, and that's the comp size, perfect. And I'm going to label it, call it background. Done. Now I'm going to make another one where I'm actually going to put the particle onto. So I'm going to say new. And once again, I'll make it a solid. And this will be my particle. Okay. And let's just look at that. 1920, 1080, same idea. All right. So here I'm going to apply my particle world. So if you can't find it, just type in particle into your effects. It's under simulation and CC particle world. So let me grab that, click and drag it onto my layer. Okay. So we see a few things here. What can we do? Let's get rid of some of these. So the very first thing I want to do grids and guides. I want to keep position because I'm going to move it around later. I can get rid of radius, which shows how the radius is going to look. Don't need that motion path. I'm also going to keep because I am going to make this move around on a particular path. The grid I don't need the horizon. I don't need access. I don't need however you might want to keep some of those around just to see exactly what is happening when we start playing around here well let's press the space bar and play this and see what happens so right off the bat we're going to see that the animation starts from nothing to something here and this is what our particle looks like now we can make a lot of changes to this so birth rate i could actually animate that obviously so let's see what birth rate does from very little to a lot we see it adds a lot more elements for us okay cool i'm going to keep it low right now uh, longevity let's see what that does Okay, very low, just something small, and then obviously making a lot more, which also gets rid of the color too. So it kind of starts off with this orangey, yellowy orange, and then it goes to this yellowy green almost. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Still want it to come off, but not too far. The producer. The producer is going to allow me to change up the position of it, which I'm going to look at later. I don't need that right now. Now the physics of it. Now we can actually change and play around with this actual specific animation here. So right now it's like explosive. I can go on a directional axis and see how that actually kind of like spits out that way. Cone axis, viscous, which I'll play with, twirl, which is pretty cool, twirly, which is another type of twirl even further, a vortex, fire, jet sideways, fractal omni, and fractal uni. And once again, I'm just going to play with Viscous just to see what kind of what this does for us. You can play with anything you want. Just playing around here right now. Velocity. Let's see what that does. So velocity. Yes. So it's kind of like throwing it out there, going really fast. Or I'm bringing down that velocity right there. Let's keep it at that. Inherent velocity. So kind of where does it start with and where does it go? If I bring it up, it's kind of that idea of like it starts off fast and goes slow or starts off slow, goes fast. Don't see a huge difference here. Now, once uh, once I got to mention this as well, some of these parameters, they might not seem they do much. Well, it's only based on what you already have set up. So some things look like they don't work, but some actually will work with other specs set up here. So let's just keep on playing around, see what they do for us. Gravity. Okay, pushing hard on that, really pushing it far down. So let's keep our gravity right about here. Resistance. See what that does. Okay, that's kind of interesting too. What it does, kind of creating this interesting ball of elements, kind of floating there, doing something interesting. Extra. Okay, with these parameters, doesn't change too much. Okay, and extra angle. If I had that, potentially that would help me out. Floor. So I'm not going to play with floor too much, but you can change the floor position, as in what comes up and what goes down, where the floor starts and where it, where it uh, ends. Um, oh, after floor, and I want to bring the floor up to show you that's it. So the floor would be where that ends up, but let me do go back to all and see if I can play with that floor to bring it up, but it doesn't seem to be showing me that right now, which is okay, but I'm not going to play with that too much anyways. And then gravity vector or sorry, directional axis. We can look at that, but once again, not too much there, not allowing me to do that because right now only certain things are set up. Uh, gravity, I'm not going to work with. Now the actual individual particle. This is kind of a big one here. We could play with these individual particles. Let me zoom in just a little bit to show you. So right now it's all these individual tiny lines. Well, let's change those to stars. And this is what stars does. And I'm going to go through all of these just to show you what they do. Now, 
Now, when we get into some of them, they just don't appear at all. And that might be, once again, because of some of my parameters I have set up. And that's all right. And I'm going to leave the textures alone. I'm just going to bring it back to star. We're just going to play around with this a little bit. But now we have options we could play around with. The texture would have been referring to the texture ones here, which we don't have. Birth size. So let's see the birth size. Let's bring it down a little bit. Let's make it the birth size. So when they first start, they're going to be really small. Uh, the death size. So I could bring it up. So that when they die around here, they're going to be a bit bigger. Or once again, I can make them a little bit smaller. So the death size is also small as well. Um, the size variation so we could actually play around with how much variation we want in from the small to the big of what i've created there uh the max opacity if i want to be very opaque or transparent we could play around with that as well and we can also look at our color changes so birth to death right now it's birth to death some of these will change up how they appear but right now i just want to look at the color so let's just say instead of yellow it starts at yellow it's going to go to let's say it starts with a green okay see how that green now goes to the red so we could kind of leave it at that, see what that does for us. And once again, there's other options here, but we're not going to play around with too much because I've already looked at quite a few and there's some changes there aren't. We could play around with camera and light, but not too much there. I'm kind of happy with what I have so far. So let's leave it at that. I'm going to back out a little bit. So there's my particle. Now, one thing I want to show is how that particle can potentially interact with something below it. Well, I have my black background on. Well, how does it interact with a picture? So I'm going to bring my picture in. There it is. I'm going to bring it underneath particle above the background and this is how it interacts. So it already interacts with it. Uh, I don't have to change up anything with the background. And of course, I could always change up my blending mode of my particle to see if that does something different. I click on my blending mode. If you can't see your blending mode, just right click, go to columns and mode. Uh, and you can click see your blending modes there. And I'm just going to kind of shuffle through them by clicking on the layer and holding down shift and plus or minus. I could actually shuffle through all the different blending modes that are available to me and see if I like one that interacts with this particular background in a certain way. Different backgrounds will help you inter help have it interact a different way with different blending modes. So you might like one over another. I'm just kind of playing around here right now, but I'm not going to use any of these anyways. Just wanted to show you that. I'm going to go back to normal. OK, I'm going to shut this off. Now what I want to do, I want this actually particle to do something, but I want it to be a part of a different animation. So I'm going to create a letter here. I grab my text layer. Just, I'm going to type in the letter C. I've already had this set up from before. So I'm just going to increase the size of this and I'm going to do a little trim path where I'm going to have this appear and then I'm going to have the particle appear with it. So I'm going to do that in just a little bit. I use this particular typeface orange. Uh, it's uh, probably from Defont. That's why it is a personal use. Uh, I'm just playing around with that for obviously educational purposes here to teach you about this and I definitely like this typeface. So with nothing selected, I'm going to click on my pen tool and just make a path from here and just start clicking around. And what I'm gonna want to do is I actually want to cover the letter, but I'm not gonna fully cover it here. I'm gonna change my path up a little bit later, right after this and see what I can do to cover this. Now my animation is at half, or sorry, my res resolution's at half. Let's go to full and see if we can get a little bit better quality here. And now with the shape layer, I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna click on, that's my stroke, that's gonna be my trim path. I'm just going to play with the contents and play with my shape one and my stroke one. So let's see what we could do. Number one, I want to change this to black so that it will help hide it. Now with this particular background being black, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, bring up the stroke width so it's going to help make, make it disappear just like that. I can fine tune these if I need to as well. So I can go back to my move tool, click on my stroke and then actually move some of these around if I need to. But once again, so if I go too far, I can kind of move those around, move my control arms as well if I need to. But for the most part, it's covered up, which is great. So the thing that I want to animate is actually not here at the moment. It's going to have to add that. It's under contents. I'm going to click on add and I want to do a trim path. And what that's going to do is going to bring up trim path down here. And I'm going to be able to show and hide the stroke. So my start, I'm going to click on my CTIs at the beginning, click on start. I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to change that start to 100%. So what's going to happen is I'm going to not see it. And then I am going to see it. it's going to kind of reveal itself for me. But what I'm also going to do is have my particle show along the trim path as it shows up. So let's do that. So what I can do, I'm going to lock my stroke and lock my C and lock my background my back this other picture is not showing anymore so i don't have to worry about that i'm going to show my particle again and let's just 
Press play and see what happens so far. It's like, okay, that's happening. That's pretty cool. So now I'm going to have this particle follow that animation. So let's take a look at that. Remember I mentioned we're going to use producer. So I'm going to twirl down effects, twirl down CC particle world, and twirl down producer. Now a good thing here actually I can do is I can actually utilize now because I have it available my position. If I didn't have it available, I'd have to actually move my X and Y on their own. But now, because I can see it and I have it visible, I can move it manually on here on the actual artboard. So I'm going to set up my first animation. I'm going to click on my X, Y, and Z because that's going to be my first. So I'm going to move it down here and I'm going to click on all of those. Great. So now I'm just going to move my CTI just a little further and start playing around with where I kind of want my next motion to go with my particle, where I want my particle to say, uh, even these ones here, I'm going to move it down a little bit, right about here, okay, and now it's going to, so I'm going to move it there, and now I'm going to move it over here, and see what that does, okay, it kind of moved up with me, I noticed here I have an extra set of keyframes I don't want, to select those and delete those, and I'm just going to keep on moving along here, so I see where my where my position is and now I'm going to move it up a little further and now I'm going to have move my CTI up and as I move this a new set of keyframes shows up okay move it a little farther and I'm going to move this again and I'm going to keep doing this until I get to a point where you know another curve shows up where I should stop maybe I can go a little bit longer so right about here maybe I should bring it down which I will move it around so I'm going to have some tighter curves here so maybe I'll bring it over here but because of the kind of overwhelmingness of the stars, I don't think it matters a little too much of how close I am. I could obviously make it very close depending on the kind of animation you're trying to do. You can make it very, very close. And the only thing I noticed I can't do is really curve out my path, which is kind of unfortunate. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of make it fall off. Maybe jump off almost. And remember, I could always change up. Sorry. I could always change up my actual uh, interest in the, the particle can change, the, uh, the animation can change. I could change up quite a few things here still, even though I've already set it up, the animation, the, the positioning and all that. So let's take a look and see what this does for us. So it kind of follows it along, but it goes a little slow. So what I can do, or a little too fast actually. So what I could actually do is I could play around with this a little bit more. Kind of have it, and it does really fall off there, which is that's nice. I could slow my animation down, but now if I slow my animation down, my my trim path, then I'm probably gonna have to change this as well. But let's just slow it down. Or yeah, and long this and see if it actually catches up with it or or maybe it just throws it right off. Yeah, it goes a little too fast, but that's okay. The idea is there that it would actually flow with it and kind of create as if it was making it happen as well. But that's it. I just wanted to show you Particle World, what it does, all the different things you could do with it, and a little bit of how we could have it interact with other animations. So you know what, what I'm going to do? I am going to go back to it here, click on Effects, click on uh, my... Uh, Grids and guides, show those off, my birth rate. I kind of want to just show what happens here. So I'm going to show this here. I'm going to bring this back over here. And what this does, it just shows the loop, what's happening in here. If I play it, it just stops here and it'll go back here. Just keep on going over and over and over again. And what I could do now, I could change my velocity. I can change uh, quite a few things here. Uh, let's try our viscous and let's change it to twirl. Let's see what that does. So a little too much going on there, which is okay. And here we're just playing around. So that was that up one, which I kind of liked with fire, but let's try the cone. That's actually kind of interesting too. Let's leave that there for a second. Um, and let's see what these other ones can do for us too. Hmm. And as we play around, we start to see different things that we can do. And, you know, once again, play around with the particle, it's not a star anymore. 
and just having some fun with what we have here because once again the animation is already done now we could just kind of see if something else will work better for us in whatever you're trying to do here obviously change up the color so maybe even the color could go to this particular one here which could be interesting let me stop this for a second that might be a little bit better okay So once again, just playing around, having some fun with it. A lot of different animations we can do here. A lot of different uh, options we have with Particle World and then utilizing Particle World in a secondary animation.